So the first, I guess, unofficial depth chart has been released. Um, just for clarification, this is via Matt Schneidman who posted this. He says the first unofficial depth part chart has been uh, released to the season. Reminder that this is put together by the PR staff and should be viewed as an estimation for where players stand. So I don't know exactly what access the PR staff has or, or how all this works um, as far as their understanding of the roster or whatever. Um, I'm a s- I, I don't I don't know. It doesn't matter. But the point is, I've been tracking for some time my thoughts on where the roster stands and where some of these guys stand. And for the most part, it's dead on, but there's a couple things that are different. And I'm going to take this at face value. And I'm going to assume that what we're seeing here is more accurate than what I've been doing. And so I kind of want to just go through this. So very quickly, if I pull up the right thing here, there we go. Here is what we've got. And that may be somewhat hard to read, but we'll, we'll do the best we can. Um, as far as the wide receivers go, I don't think anything necessarily should be surprising. Lazard and Sammy Watkins are one and two. Lazard is one. Watkins is two. Um, I think some people maybe would have assumed Romeo's higher than he is, but I don't think that's the case. In fact, I think what we're seeing here is that Juwan is actually ahead of Romeo Dobbs. If that is the case, then I would be off by one spot because I think I have Romeo ahead of Juwan Winfrey. But either way, those are the the number two um, wide receivers. After that, Malik Taylor, Danny Davis, Osiris Mitchell. The only question being, um, when Christian Watson comes back, where does he slot in? Um, I don't know the answer to that question necessarily. I'm assuming he just takes Juwan Winfrey's place. And the only reason I even say that, I, I maybe early on they would put him like third team or whatever just for the sake of you know PR, I guess. But um, considering I'm, I'm expecting them to keep, keep six receivers, they can't keep him outside of six, right? And since Amari and Randall and Lazard and Watkins and Dobbs are definitely going to be on the team, he's got to be in there in place of Juwan Winfrey. So that'll happen eventually. So uh, I, I think for the sake of being accurate, we would say that he's ahead of Juwan Winfrey. He would take that spot. Um, offensive line, they've been doing some rotating, but this one seems to be the most um, common. Yash, Runyon, Myers, Hanson, Newman. The other way that they do this is Royce at guard, Zach Tom at either left tackle or right tackle, and then Yash being the other tackle. But this one seems to be the slightly more prominent. The The weird thing about it, though, is it says first team, second team, third team, but really half of this offensive line or more is already second team, right? Because Yash Nyman is second team behind David Bakhtiari. Um, Royce is, I guess, the right guard, but second team right tackle behind so so et cetera, et cetera. As it stands then, John Runyon, Josh Myers are the only ones that are first team that are actually first team, aside from Royce, who's presumably the right guard. Um Jake Hansen is essentially second team, I guess second team center and second team right guard, I guess. I don't really know. Um Zach Tom then would be sort of our one, two, three, four, fifth tackle. So it, he's he's making great progress, but again, Bakhtiari, Elton Jenkins, Yash Nyman, Bryce Newman, Zach Tom. So it's cool that he's getting first team reps, but again, that that makes you at best third. Um everything else is kind of in line. I mean, Sean Ryan, it, it looks different than it is. It gives the impression Sean Ryan and Zach Tom are both kind of second slash third team, but really that's not entirely fair. Um, Zach Tom is, I think, further along than, than Sean Ryan is. He's been getting much more first team reps. And even amongst this sort of group of second team guys, Sean Ryan has never cracked the first team, not once. And he's kind of rotating in and out between second team and third team at this stage, meaning he's kind of third team, fourth team, I guess, if that were even a thing. Um, but everything is pretty much in line as you would expect. Nothing super crazy there. Michael Manette as the backup left guard makes sense. He's been getting uh, rotated in as the backup. Sort of, he's he's been consistently the second team um, left guard. I think the only super surprising thing, if you look at the second team, is that Zach Tom is seen as the right tackle and Cole Van Lannen is the left tackle. Zach Tom, I think, has spent more time at left tackle, and Cole Van Lannen has almost exclusively been a right tackle. Um, he's had a little bit of time at left tackle, but almost exclusively. So it's weird that they put it that way. But everything else seems. 100% in line. I see Cole Schneider is there as the backup center. I'm assuming he's behind Jake Hansen, but for the sake of Jake Hansen being the right guard, it is what it is. Um, then you got the slot receivers, Randall, then Amari. Um, 
the the only interesting thing, I mean, everything is in line here with Samori and then Ishmael Hyman, but the question of will Samori, could Samori in any circumstance make the team? The only thing I can't help but think is because he's in his own category of being a slot, maybe that helps. Maybe it hurts. I don't really know. But either way, I, I don't see him. You know, we don't need a third slot receiver. Um, quarterback obviously is not worth discussing. Running back is actually very interesting because I've been dying to get an answer. And again, this is not official, but I've been dying to get an answer on on running back and to see Tyler Goodson officially ahead of Patrick Taylor. And some people are going to say that's that's been obvious. It hasn't been to me. Um, to see that here, officially unofficially, is is actually very surprising to me. Um, Goodson has been the best running back in camp, and and. I shouldn't even say that. He's been the best runner in camamp by a mile. It's not even been close. I mean, the, the, if, if you've heard any reports, not including Aaron Jones and Jamal uh, and AJ Dillon, um, any reports of really good running, it's been Tyler Goodson. The, the issue I have is that obviously with Patrick Taylor having had experience, I think he did a good job last year in the regular season and all that. I kind of assumed he and Hill would be ahead of Tyler Goodson and BJ Baylor. And on top of that, what I've been saying is that BJ Baylor has not been nearly as good of a runner but he excels as a blocker, and he's also shown up several times as a receiver. So if the Packers are more interested in a much more versatile back, I think B.J. Baylor might be the guy. I'm not saying Tyler can't do those things, but but it has been more, it stood out more in terms of B.J. Baylor's versatility. So again, you got the versatility of Baylor, you got the running ability of Goodson, you have the experience of Taylor, and then Hill was sort of the number three officially last year and has the special team stuff. So he's sort of the lock number three, but he hasn't been out there. So I don't really know where he would come in. Maybe maybe he would come back in and take Tyler Goodson's spot and he would drop. But either way, the again, unofficial, but the fact that Goodson has officially been, at least now I can kind of separate it, separate it out and say, okay, we got a guy. Goodson will be the number three for now, and then it'll be a battle. And, and you know, not official, but it's it's a starting point. Um, defensive line is kind of exactly as we thought. Many people have been pushing Jonathan Ford in that Jack Heflin spot. It may still happen. I don't really see it happening. Um, but we'll see if he continues to make plays from what I've seen in camp and everyone's talking about it as though he's made a billion plays. I have two, I think on record that he's had, which I mean, Heflin hasn't had a bunch either, but again, he's got experience as a Green Bay Packer understanding of the scheme and the expectations and the, the, everything else techniques. So I feel like that's pretty well locked in. Dean, Clark, Reed, Wyatt, Slayton, and Heflin with a very slim chance that Ford could beat out Heflin. Um, and, and I think it really just has to do with people being excited about a draft pick and not really caring about Heflin all that much. But in reality, I don't think Jonathan Ford has really done anything. And, and the fact that he's a 340-pound nose tackle, um, not that that isn't somewhat useful, but it's, it's very limited in terms of what you're able to get out of him. Um, in terms of how much usage you can get out of them, because of obviously the conditioning is not quite where it would be with, say, a 295 pound defensive tackle. But also, you're getting no pass rush. You'd have to quickly run, you know, if it's fourth and one and they get a first down, now it's first and 10. You got to sprint him off the field and they're not going to, they're going to try to keep him on the, you know, so that's what you don't want to get stuck in is, is when teams keep, force a guy to stay on the field. You don't want to have those guys where it's like, we have to get him off or we're doomed. I, he might fall into that category. Um, outside linebackers, Preston and Rashawn. And then, again, interesting, I've been trying to get clarification. And it's such a weird thing because all through camp prior to family night, Tipa, uh, Naliai, and where is he? Ladarius Hamilton have been one and two, or, or three and four, I guess. But, but you know, looking at beyond the starters, they have been the number one and number two guys all through camp. Then family night shows up. And it's Ladarius Hamilton and Jonathan Garvin. And not only is Tipa not running with the twos, he's apparently running with the threes. And it's like, what what is going on here? He's not even getting opportunities, not not with the ones, not with the twos, not with the threes, or, or with the threes only. So I don't know where that comes from. Now we get this unofficial depth chart, and not only is Garvin back in the twos, but so is Randy Ramsey. And now Hamilton's with the threes, but Naliai is with the twos. So it's such a weird thing. I was hoping yesterday's training camp would provide some insight, but none of the people at camp had reported on who the starting or, or backup defensive linemen, uh, outside linebackers were. So this kind of further conf confuses and complicates things, but um, I guess I'll run with this as it is. Um, my assumption prior to training camp was Garvin and Ramsey, and then and then Nali I would probably be after that. But um, 
and, and even depending on how you read this, if, if Rashawn Gary is your number one, that could mean Tipa is your number three, followed by Garvin, followed by Ramsey, followed by Hamilton, which I think is the way that this is laid out, which fair enough. And that's that's how I'll see it from now on, but um, or at least until we get further updates. But that just kind of just kind of throws me off in general. Linebacker, Quay and Devondre, Chris Barnes after that, then Isaiah McDuffie, which I think is the way I have it laid out. Um, after that, I think I had Ray Wilborn, but looks like they have Ty Summers, which makes sense. Then maybe, uh, then it's Ellis, then Ray Will. I don't know. I don't know. doesn't matter, but that's, that's pretty well along the lines of what we had expected. Corners, Jair and Stokes, number one and two. They don't have it split up into slot or not. So it's just Razul would be the number three. Um, after that, I'm assuming it's Shamar. The thing, the only thing that's surprising about this is that Rico Gafford is as far back as he is. I would have thought Rico was not only ahead of Ento, but maybe even possibly ahead of Shamar, just because not only is special teams really, really going well, um, but just his ability as a corner has been going incredibly well. So that's a little surprising to see Rico as far. And, and by the way, as you can see on the kick return there, he's the number one kick returner. So and maybe we just keep a bunch of corners. It's I mean, we, we've got one, two, three, four, five. That would be six. Keep six corners. Rico's fine. But then you don't have Keyshawn Nixon, who is, you know, something to consider. Um, safety, everything is more or less exactly as you would expect it. Um, I think Innis Gaines would probably surprise some people. In fact, Vernon Scott surprised a lot of people. I had Vernon as number three, but then I think it was followed by Levitt and Sean Davis. They have Innis Gaines even ahead of those guys. Now, Levitt and Sean Davis are just like the pure special teamers, I believe. But um, Innis Gaines, I, I don't know that he's done a ton in general. So it's kind of surprising to see him, I guess, as the number, in this case, possibly number two. I, 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 I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, if I'm reading this correctly, I guess with, if, if Amos had gone out, would Innis Gaines be in, I guess is my question. Because I think the assumption by everybody is that Vernon Scott is the number three. But I'm just curious if, if Amos had gone down, is there that big of a difference that Innis would have come in? I don't know. That's weird. I'm probably reading too much into how this depth chart is structured. But um, again, Innis would be a little bit surprising being as high up as he is. So Vernon, then Innis, then then again, I think it's Sean Davis and Dallin Levitt. Um, Three Carpenter is absolutely dead last in my mind, just because he's having a completely horrible camp. And I haven't heard him do anything on special teams either. Um, and then special teams, Gabe and Pat are there. I think Gabe will eventually lose that job as soon as Mason gets healthy because he's been having a really rough camp. Um, punt return, it's good to get some clarity there. I knew Romeo and Amari were kind of on equal footing, at least as I had it laid out. I thought maybe Ro Romeo would be slightly ahead, but they have it as Amari number one. And then uh, for kick return, they have Rico and then Amari. So similar names that I have for all these guys, but just the, the sorting of it. And then Coco, uh, not surprising at long snapper. He's been pretty consistent in terms of being ahead of uh, Mr. Wirtel. So, um, that's about it. Again, this is all unofficial and there's still a lot of time to sort through these things with uh, preseason and everything else. But a couple things that surprised me here, nothing massive or earth shattering in terms of the starters, but, um, a good kind of first look, I guess, at the official unofficial depth chart. So anyways, you guys take care and, uh, thanks for, uh, tuning in.